going on guys it's greg here aka ny prepper it is tuesday april 16th 2024 and i have an emergency update to share with you guys right now it is 1409 eastern time here in the united states and i wanted to update you on the situation with iran and israel so earlier today the israeli war cabinet met for the fifth time since the Iranian strike on Saturday, and they decided on a response or a counter strike. This is being reported by Khan News in Israel. So, Israel has decided on a counter strike plan, and apparently, government ministers advised Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, to attack sensitive facilities in Iran. Most of the decision makers in the war cabinet believe that the action should be carried out as soon as possible. There were differences of opinions on the way for Israel to respond. Apparently, the war cabinet minister Benny Gantz and the defense minister Yoav Gallant thought it was necessary to wait until there were agreements on a regional coalition and others believe that it was necessary to respond immediately but there was unanimity in the war cabinet that israel must respond okay so this is huge news guys so we could be looking at a response as soon as this evening and i will be covering the situation live and the Israeli Defense Forces have apparently decided on how they will counter-strike Iran and its proxies, but they have not yet released any information on the timing. Multiple sources have told the Jerusalem Post. And Iran has kicked out UN weapons inspectors from all of their nuclear facilities due to quote-unquote security purposes. The IAEA Director General said yesterday, our inspectors in Iran were informed by the Iranian government yesterday that all nuclear facilities would remain closed. And he also said that he fears that Israel will damage Iran's nuclear facilities. Okay, so Iran kicking out UN inspectors from their nuclear facilities that is obviously a red flag maybe israel is seriously pondering striking iran's nuclear facilities i think that's what they're going to do because iran has already threatened a massive retaliation if israel launches a counter strike so regardless if their counter strike is small or large they're still going to retaliate against israel so israel might as well go big and go for the nuclear facilities it's now or never basically because israel is now justified and iran has prepared 1500 ballistic missiles of various types to be launched at israel during a three-day retaliation plan if israel attacks directly this was stated by Iran's foreign minister in a phone call with the Egyptian foreign minister. So 1,500 ballistic missiles are prepared to fire at Israel over a three-day period if Israel attacks Iran. So Israel is going to have to strike all those ballistic missiles, their storage sites, their launch platforms. They're going to have to strike all those missiles so this way Iran can't use them against Israel, and then they can think about taking out Iran's nuclear facilities like Natanz, Fordow, Parchin. So I think we're going to see it, guys. I think we're going to see this massive strike by Israel, and I think it's going to last over several days. I don't think it's going to be like a two or three hour operation. Okay, this is going to be a massive strike on Iran. They're going to have to take out their missile sites so Iran can't retaliate. They're going to have to take out their air defenses, their radars, and potentially their nuclear facilities. Okay, yesterday I reported 
that Israel was considering striking deep into Iran and that they were considering striking a specific facility that would hurt Iran. So that sounds a lot to me like Natanz. And American officials told NBC News last night that the Israeli response to Iran could take place at any moment. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke with the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak today. And it's been a few days since they spoke on the phone. Apparently, Netanyahu rejected talks with several world leaders since the strikes on Saturday. And the president of Iran, Ibrahim Raisi, said this morning in a conversation with the emir of Qatar that Iran will react massively, widely, and painfully to the smallest act that attacks Iranian interests and those who do it. And the British airliner EasyJet has suspended all flights to Israel until October 27th amid the security situation. Wow, guys, until October 27th. That's insane. So obviously something big is about to go down and we could be looking at a multi-month war in the Middle East. And Russia is considering transferring some of their Sukhoi 35 fighter jets and S-400 air defense systems to Iran so Iran can defend themselves against strikes by Israel and the United States. And this comes a day after we had that information leak out that apparently the Russian defense minister told Iran that they would help Iran retaliate against Israel and the U.S. if Israel and the U.S. struck Iran, okay? Because Iran and Russia have a defense pact. The leader of Russia's National Security Council, Nikolai Petrushev, who happens to be one of Putin's close friends and the former director of the KGB, went to Iran like three or four months ago and met with the Iranian Security Council and they signed some kind of an agreement. A popular antivirus company has just been fined $16 million because its privacy software was secretly being used to sell user data. For years, this antivirus software company harvested user information without their consent while tricking the users into thinking they were using privacy software. That's why I've been protecting my data with Virtual Shield 1. Thanks to Virtual Shield 1, my data is monitored and protected from data breaches, advertisers, tech giants, and cyber criminals. This advanced identity theft protection suite provides 24-7 peace of mind and security. It's easy to use, and if you use the link in the description below this video, which is virtualshield.com slash deals slash NY Prepper, you can save over 50% and get a 60-day risk-free trial. This includes unlimited bandwidth, anonymous browsing, and fast internet speeds across all of your devices. So use the link in the description below this video, which is virtualshield.com slash deals slash NY Prepper to get a huge discount and a 60-day risk-free trial on Virtual Shield 1 Identity Theft Protection. And Denmark is going to close its embassy in Iraq over the security situation in the region. And Israel is preparing for the possibility that in order to disrupt Israel's response to Iran, Iran will activate Hezbollah and the militias in Syria and direct them to attack Israel in a more aggressive manner. So that's pretty interesting. And at this hour, we have U.S. nuclear forces still on high alert. We have three Boeing E-6B Mercury's airborne this afternoon and a B-52 nuclear bomber somewhere over the Gulf of Mexico. And on Friday, before the Iranian strike on Israel, a Sky King message was broadcasted to our nuclear forces. Now, a Sky King message is the highest priority message to our nuclear forces below 
an emergency war order. The emergency war order is the most important message. That's the order to launch from the Pentagon to our ballistic missile subs, to our bombers, and to our Minuteman 3 silos. Okay, The emergency war order is number one, but below that you have the Sky King message, which is the highest priority nuclear attack option that's broadcasted to our nuclear forces. And to hear one of those is like seeing a mermaid at the beach, okay? They're very, very rare. I think the last Sky King message was like 10 years ago, and it was mostly just transmitted for an exercise, okay? But we had a Sky King message go out Friday that was actually a real-world Sky King message, okay? So that means our nuclear forces are at DEFCON 2, our military is at DEFCON 2, okay? That is the highest level of readiness for the U.S. military and for our nuclear forces. They're prepared for a massive escalation potentially in the Middle East, okay? And also, we had the presidential doomsday plane of the Israeli president and also the Israeli prime minister take off earlier this morning from Ben Gurion Airport and it went out into the Mediterranean. So the Israeli government is preparing for a war with Iran and that could happen any hour now. Okay. They sent their doomsday plane in the air earlier this morning. And what's interesting is there was a US Army priority air transport plane that took off from Cyprus earlier this morning, and it was destined to go to Tel Aviv. But then at the last minute, it turned around and went back to Cyprus. So I don't know what happened there, but that also happened at the same time as this Israeli doomsday plane took off. Okay, it was all at the same time. So I don't know what happened there. And we also had this special cargo plane fly from Dover. Delaware to Beersheba, Israel, and this plane is responsible for carrying special cargo for the military, special weapons. So I don't know what kind of weapons they're giving Israel, but it must be something serious if they're using this plane. Here we have a video showing the remnants of one of the Iranian missiles that was launched towards Israel Saturday. It was found in the Dead Sea. Guys, this is biblical, okay? Israel coming under attack like this, first Hamas, then Iran. This is biblical, guys. We are living in the end times, okay? So you need to get right with God. And Naftali Bennett, the former Israeli prime minister, said when you shoot 350 flying objects, time to hit Israel at the same moment, when you use three fundamentally different weapon types, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and UAVs, you're looking to penetrate Israel's defenses and kill Israelis. The U.S. administration is telling us this is a victory you've already won by thwarting the missiles. No need for any further action. No, it's not a victory. Yes, it's a remarkable success of Israel's air defense systems but it's not a victory. You don't win wars just by intercepting your enemy's hits, nor do you deter it. Your enemy will just try harder with more and better weapons and methods next time. How do you deter? By exacting a deeply painful price. So very strong words there from Naftali Bennett. And I totally agree with what he said. And the Israeli Defense Forces Northern Command prepared for potential confrontation with Iran through an intensive cyber and combat drill today, simulating readiness for a hybrid digital and kinetic war across multiple fronts. And the chief economist at the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, warned that the expansion of the conflict in the Middle East will raise energy prices. An Egyptian foreign minister told CNN, that mutual strikes between Israel and Iran will plunge us into a never-ending cycle of revenge. And there were some unconfirmed reports earlier today that the Demona nuclear facility 
in Israel, that's the birthplace of Israeli nuclear weapons, came under a cyber attack earlier today. And Iranian militias in eastern Syria have completed evacuation of all their headquarters in case of a possible attack by Israel, according to local sources. And U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has postponed a visit to India that was scheduled for this week due to the ongoing events in the Middle East. And Israel eliminated a senior Hezbollah commander today in an airstrike on his car. And the IDF says that the Israeli Air Force aircraft struck Hezbollah military structures and terrorist operatives in several towns in southern Lebanon earlier today. And a senior U.S. official told ABC News that the U.S. relied too heavily on the misguided conception that Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini, was cautious and would never order a direct attack on Israel, and that this weekend's attack and the general U.S. assessment of Iran now requires study and reassessment. Duh! I mean, this is just absolutely crazy, guys. Our country is being run by a bunch of morons. And when Israel responds to Iran's attack, its aim will be to send a message of deterrence to Tehran while drawing a line under this round of hostilities, a senior Israeli lawmaker stated today. We'll have to react. Iranians will know we reacted, and I sincerely hope that it will teach them a lesson that you can't attack a sovereign country just because you find it doable, said Yuli Edelstein, who chairs the Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee. So he's the leader of the Israeli Parliament's Defense Committee, and he's saying that they will react, okay? China continues to speak out against Israel. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs strongly condemned the attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus, called for a ceasefire in Gaza, and stated that the situation of the Palestinians is the longest injustice in the modern world and that action must be taken to implement the two-state solution. This is all biblical, guys. Okay, The Bible says that the kings of the East will attack Israel at some point in the future. And the U.S. Navy spent nearly a billion dollars on munitions to thwart over 130 direct attacks on U.S. military and merchant ships in the Middle East over the past six months, the U.S. Navy secretary said today. And the U.S. Army has deployed the Typhon missile system to China's backyard for the first time. The Army's Typhon system, which can fire Tomahawk and SM-6 missiles, is in the Philippines for its inaugural Indo-Pacific deployment. So they're deploying this missile system to the Philippines, and this system can launch Tomahawk missiles, which have a thousand mile range, and they're also nuclear capable, and it can fire the SM-6 missiles, which are ballistic missile interceptors, okay? These are the same missiles that are on the Aegis destroyers. The Aegis destroyers are the same ships that the U.S. used to intercept the ballistic missiles that Iran fired towards Israel. So that's a huge move by the army, and they're putting them in the Philippines. And Taiwan has successfully tested a new air defense system. And the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force announced that they will dispatch members of the Special Security Forces to the Indo-Pacific region starting next month to provide support for Coast Guard agencies such as the Philippines Coast Guard, who has recently been attacked by the Chinese Coast Guard. Okay, so Japan sending special forces, special security forces to the Philippines to help the Philippines secure their territorial waters and prevent attacks by China because China has been attacking the Philippines, okay, their Coast Guard with water cannons and they've been blockading certain islands that the Philippines have. And the Argentinian president officially signed up for buying 24 F-16s from Denmark. 
So that's some of the latest breaking news that I have. It looks like this Israeli attack on Iran is imminent. I do believe they're going to go for the nuclear facilities, at least one of them. And I do believe they're going to neutralize a lot of their ballistic missiles, their missile storage sites, their radars. They're going to try to degrade Iran's capabilities from launching missiles at Israel. Okay. And I think they're going to go for the nuclear facilities as well. So this could really escalate, guys. Russia has already moved a warship full of hypersonic missiles into the Mediterranean. And supposedly they said they would help Iran strike back at the U.S. and Israel if Israel and the U.S. strike Iran. So this is a very, very serious situation. Our nuclear forces are at DEFCON 2. So I will be monitoring the situation and I will go live when things kick off. So make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell icon down below so you get notified when I go live and when I post these updates. And I will be back later tonight with another update or a live stream. So until then, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. And before I continue with the breaking news, I wanted to mention the sponsor for this update, which is My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply is doing a massive 30% discount on their one week emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link in the description below this video, which is preparewithnyprepper.com. The normal price for their one week freeze dried emergency food supply is $80. They're knocking it down to $50 for one week of emergency food with a 25 year shelf life. And it's all packed into a small lockable ammo can with a waterproof gasket. They also have a general store. And to get to their general store, you just got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo at the top of the page when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com. And their general store has everything you can imagine, prepping and survival related, and they're always doing discounts. So check it out. Use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get over 35% off of the My Patriot Supply one week emergency food supply and also to get access to their general store. And they're always doing discounts there. I'll leave the link in the description below this video.